Recently, Zaryu, Vinruki, and Raikou got together to give their thoughts on mages in Dragonflight. They were expressing a few concerns, and we spoke to Mero to see if he could break everything down. We will figure out what has some mages worried, including some talents which seem like noob bait, and some other things that you might actually be looking forward to in the next expansion. So sit back and enjoy this preview of what's around the corner for mages in Dragonflight. But before we start, we're going to be pumping out content for Dragonflight, Wrath Classic, and of course Shadowlands in the upcoming months, so be sure to subscribe to stay ahead of the meta. Kicking things off, let's go over the general changes to Mage in Dragonflight. We're going to give you some speculative builds throughout this video, but before we do, let's introduce the general tree. Here is the TLDR. Mages are somehow looking even more dampening than before. This is due in part to every spec retaining Alter Time, while also having a new talent option to reduce its cooldown and to reset the CD on Blink every time Alter Time is used. This interaction will also work with Shimmer, meaning that mages could potentially blink three times in a row under specific circumstances, a throwback to Legion PvP. This comes on the back of Slow being available for all mage specs. This might not seem like a big deal, but having an instant 35 yard range slow is good for, well, you know, slowing down the game, especially for a fire mage who lacks a reliable snare in their toolkit. Another reason mages might be more tanky is greater invisibility becoming baseline deep within the general tree. Previously, the spell was arcane only, but now gives all mages an additional defensive cooldown that can be used to survive setups. There is also a newly introduced talent selection between Mass Polymorph and Blast Wave, and this choice has a high chance of being noob bait for many players. Honestly, Mass Polymorph is not that good. First of all, it has a 10 yard range, meaning players could simply walk out of it, but more importantly, mages typically want to rotate sheep DRs on the enemy team rather than putting everyone on DR at the same time. Blast Wave seems to be the more consistent choice in this talent selection and will be a new peeling option, especially on maps with a Z axis due to its knockback effect. But perhaps the biggest change to Mage as a whole is the fact that Dragon's Breath is now baseline, but is deep within the tree and has a 45 second cooldown. This means it will lose a substantial amount of its value and might coerce all mage specs into playing more like a wizard than a caster that is constantly pushing in for CC, but we will cover that later. Another talent for aspiring wizards is Time Anomaly, which will randomly grant Combustion, Icy Veins, or a new spell called Arcane Surge, depending on the spec of the mage. This talent seems to reinforce a more wizard-based playstyle where you are constantly turning damage without really looking to push into CC. And finally, mages will be holding onto shifting power, but it's unclear how strong it will be without its additional conduit modifiers. Shifting might still be relevant, however, as mages are retaining other forms of cooldown reduction, which will have a multiplying effect with the spell. Alright, with general changes out of the way, let's speculate what fire might look like in Dragonflight. As we mentioned, the devs seem to be pushing mages towards being a true wizard class, which is indicated by a few key talents, even for fire. Here we have a speculated build for fire mages that seem to reinforce a wizard based playstyle. This build hinges on three key talents that would encourage hard casting pyroblast. The first is tempered flames, which reduces the cast time on pyro by an astounding 40%. This would stack with both pyroclasm and sun king's blessing to encourage a playstyle where pyroblasts are hard casted, somewhat similar to BFA Season 4. This would mean that Fire has an entirely new metagame that is built more around dealing consistent casted pressure rather than looking for clean coordinated CC setups, which is again reinforced by Time Anomaly in the General Tree, a talent that isn't reliable enough for a calculated setup based playstyle. But not all hope is lost for you RMP diehards, as Fire will still have a talent tree catered around 3 2 1 goes. Here we have a secondary build which is more consistent with the current Fire Mage playstyle. This talent tree is built more around kindling and some additional combustion and pyroblast modifiers in order to get the biggest damage possible in the shortest period of time, while picking up Ring of Frost, Shifting Power, DB, and Meteor to get bigger and more frequent setups. If we had to guess, this would be the build catered more towards melee caster compositions, especially with rogues or windwalkers. Next up we have Frost, which to no surprise is retaining its wizard identity. Here is a speculated build that reflects the more modern Frost Mage playstyle. The key talents here are Deep Shatter, Frigid Shattering, and Slick Ice, which together give you massive Frost Bolt damage into frozen targets. This would only work if you were given the opportunity to free cast, which generally happens when you play a Wizard Cleave setup like Mage Lock or Ellie Mage. Just like Fire Mage, there is another build which might be good for melee caster setups. The key talent here is Focused Frost, which gives more damage to Frozen Orb when it hits a single target. This might be difficult to pull off in 3v3, given all the random pets that seem to be part of every comp, but the bigger problem with a Frost 
Frost Mage setup based build is that it is simply too difficult to reliably cast on setups. There always seems to be some sort of interrupt or micro CC that prevents you from sitting there and turreting damage, so this setup based build might be a bit irrelevant in actual gameplay. There's also a new data mined passive called Frostbite, which might add a 50% healing reduction to frozen or slowed targets, which gets nerfed to 25% in PvP. This is a pretty big buff to a select few comps, namely Mage Lock or really any Frost Mage comp that doesn't already have a Mortal Strike effect. We don't expect this to change the strength of Frost Mages in comps like RMP, since the healing reduction on Wound Poison can be even stronger in PvP settings. So the TLDR with Frost is that it seems to favor a more wizard based frost bolt centric playstyle where a lot of damage modifiers are tied behind being able to free cast for anyone who was hoping to have more melee caster options for frost that may be possible but for the moment it seems like there are too many good talents focused around chain casting which you typically cannot do without another caster on your team that brings us to arcane which is probably the biggest question mark out of the three specs First up, the biggest change. Arcane Power has been replaced with a janky talent called Arcane Surge, which drains all of your mana instantly for a big burst of AoE damage while granting a spell power buff. If draining all your mana instantly wasn't awkward enough, the spell has a baseline cast time of 2.5 seconds, which seems really bad in a meta game where disruption is everywhere. Your main build for PvP will most likely be built around clear casting procs and its interactions with other core abilities. Getting a proc will give you more damage on arcane missiles while allowing you to channel it while moving. All of this sounds like fun, but really hinges on the damage of arcane missiles itself, which has been quite underwhelming in Shadowlands. Arcane could potentially have another gimmicky one-shot build centered around building towards massive arcane barrage hits. While these builds can be fun to play, they are notoriously unreliable in PvP, where a single defensive cooldown can shut down 30 seconds worth of ramp up. So what is the fate of Arcane Mage in Dragonflight? Well, a lot of that rides on how much damage Arcane Missiles is able to do. There is a chance we could see a resurgence of a Legion Arcane playstyle, utilizing multiple blinks thanks to Master of Time, and just like Legion, gaining Arcane Charges might be much easier thanks to Arcane Orb having two charges with an additional talent. So let's recap everything we covered by first going back to where we started. Zaryu, Venruki, and Raikou were all pointing towards a few different trends within the Mage Dragonflight talent trees. Perhaps the biggest concern people are having is the fact that Blizzard seems to be giving mages even more tankiness, while continuing to pigeonhole Frost into this wizard fiesta where hard casting is needed. Major revamps would be needed to both Frost and Arcane in order to make them more suitable for the modern PvP meta. But we want to know what you think. How do you feel about the future of mages? Let us know in the comments below. And once again, please consider subscribing. We will be uploading tons of new content for Dragonflight, Wrath Classic, and Shadowlands in the next few months, and we want to make sure you stay ahead of the meta. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.